Are you looking for a way to level up your English? Have you tried reading, but you always get bored or find it too hard? Then you should try to listen to this story. Chapter 1 Beauty's Family A rich man lives in a big city near the sea. He has got three daughters and three sons. One daughter is called Beauty because she is very beautiful. The other two daughters are called Rosalind and Hortensia. They are lazy and unfriendly. They like going out and having fun. They both want to find a rich husband. They do not like Beauty because she is beautiful. Beauty has got long red hair. She is kind and friendly. She likes staying at home and reading books. She also likes playing the piano. Beauty's father is a merchant. One day he loses all his money because his ship is lost at sea. My dear children, he says sadly, I haven't got much money. We're poor. We must leave this big house and go and live in the country. Oh dear, say the two sisters. We're poor. This is terrible. What bad luck, say the three brothers. We have to work now, says Beauty's father. Work, say the two sisters. No, we don't want to work. And we don't want to live in the country. They start to cry. Beauty is sad, but she says, Let's not cry. We can work and be happy without money. The family goes to the country and lives in a small house. Beauty gets up at four o'clock every morning to clean the house and cook. Then she washes the family's clothes in the river. The three brothers work in the country. Rosalind and Hortensia do not work. They do nothing all day. They sleep all morning and walk in the woods in the afternoon. I'm unhappy, says Rosalind. I don't like the country because there's nothing to do. We can't go to the theatre and wear nice clothes, says Hortensia, and we haven't got any friends. Look at beauty, says Rosalind angrily. She works and she's happy in this terrible place. Beauty's father says, Dear Beauty, you work a lot and you're always happy. You're a wonderful daughter. Chapter 2 Beauty's Rose A year later Beauty's father gets an important letter. He calls his six children and says, Listen to this letter, your ship is here. It is not lost at sea. Please come to the port. Everyone is happy. This is wonderful news. Say the three sons. Yes, says their father, the ship with my goods is in the port. We're rich again. Says Rosalind. We can buy beautiful clothes. We can go back to our big house in the city says Hortensia. I must go to the port today, says her father happily. Oh, father, says Hortensia, bring me some new clothes and new hats. Yes, says Rosalind, and some new shoes and jewels. Beauty's father looks at her and says, What do you want, Beauty? Please don't spend your money, father, says Beauty. Just bring me a rose. Beauty's father gets to the port and finds his ship. But there are no goods on it, it is empty. What bad luck! He says angrily. I must go home and tell the children the bad news. On the way home he crosses a big forest. It is snowing and windy. He is lost. Where am I? He thinks. Where can I go? 
I'm very cold and tired. He hears some wolves and he is afraid. Suddenly he sees a big castle in the forest. And there are lights in the windows. Oh, good. He thinks. Perhaps the people in the castle can help me. He takes his horse to the stable near the castle. He knocks on the big door of the castle but no one answers. He waits outside the door. Then he opens the door and goes inside. He sees a big hall with a fireplace. There is a long table with a lot of food on it. He is cold and sits near the fireplace. How strange, he thinks, there's no one here. He is hungry and sits down at the table and starts to eat. Then he is sleepy. He finds a warm, comfortable bed and falls asleep. The next morning he finds some new clothes near his bed. How nice! New clothes! He thinks. A kind person lives in this castle. He looks out of the window and is surprised. It's not snowing and it's a beautiful day. He thinks. And there are flowers in the garden. He gets dressed and goes to the hall. There are biscuits, chocolate and milk on the long table. He sits down and says, Thank you for this lovely breakfast. He looks round but sees no one. He eats and decides to go home. He goes to the stable and gets his horse. In the garden he sees some roses. Beauty wants a rose, he thinks. He takes a lovely one. Suddenly he hears a terrible noise. He turns round and sees an ugly monster. Chapter 3 The Beast You're a bad man, cries the beast angrily. You come to my castle and I save your life. You eat here and you sleep here. And then you take one of my beautiful roses. For this you must die. Beauty's father starts to cry. Oh, sir, he says, I'm sorry. You're very kind. Please don't be angry with me. This rose is for one of my daughters. My name is not Sir, it is Beast. Please call me by my name. You talk about your daughters. Then one of your daughters must die in your place. Oh, no says Beauty's father. They're young and they don't want to die. Then you must come back here and die, says the beast. I can wait three months. Do you agree to come back? Beauty's father agrees to come back. My daughters must not die, he thinks. I want to go home and see my children for the last time. Before Beauty's father leaves the castle the beast talks to him. I'm not bad, says the beast. Go back to your bedroom. There is a big chest there. Fill it with everything you want and it is yours. Beauty's father fills the chest with a lot of gold. Then he gets on his horse and goes home. When he is at home he gives the rose to Beauty. Take this rose, Beauty, he says sadly. Let me tell you about my terrible adventure. He tells his children about the empty ship in the port, the castle in the forest and the beast. Rosalind and Hortensia are angry with Beauty. They say, Father must die because you like roses, Beauty. No, says Beauty, father is not going to die. I'm going to the beast's castle. No, dear sister, say her three brothers. We're going to his castle and we're going to kill him. 
No, that's not possible, says their father. The beast is very big and strong. I'm old, I must go and die. But Beauty does not agree. She decides to go to the beast's castle. No, father, she says, you must not go. I want to go. Never, my dear Beauty, says her father. I'm not afraid, says Beauty. You must live and look after my brothers and sisters. They need you. Beauty's father thinks for a moment. Then he says sadly, All right, Beauty. You can go. Beauty's brothers are very sad, but Hortensia and Rosalind are not. The next morning Beauty and her father go to the beast's castle. Inside the castle they see a long table with a lot of good food on it. Beauty and her father are not hungry, but they sit down and eat. Suddenly they hear a loud noise. What's that terrible noise? Asks Beauty. The beast is coming, says her father. Beauty sees the beast's ugly face and she is terrified. Oh, this beast is really terrible. She thinks. The beast looks at her and says, You're a brave girl. I'm very sorry about the rose from your garden, says Beauty quietly. The beast looks at Beauty's father and says, You must go away tomorrow. And don't come back. Do you understand? Beauty's father looks at the beast and then at his daughter. Oh, Beauty, he says, please go home. Let me stay here. No, father, says Beauty. We must be brave. We're both tired, let's go and sleep now. Tomorrow morning you can go home to my brothers and sisters. That night Beauty has a dream. In her dream a good fairy says, You're a good girl, Beauty. And you've got a kind heart. You want to save your father's life. You're going to be very happy one day. Chapter 4 Life at the Castle The next morning Beauty's father leaves the castle. He is crying. Don't cry, father, says Beauty. Remember, I love you. Goodbye, dear Beauty, says her father. Beauty is terrified. The beast is going to eat me tonight, she thinks. I want to enjoy my last day. I'm going to visit the garden of the castle. She goes to see the big garden and she is surprised. It is a beautiful garden with a lot of lovely flowers. Then she goes to see the big castle. She looks in all the rooms. On one door she sees this sign, Beauty's Room. She opens the door and sees a lovely room. There is a nice bed and a mirror on the wall. Beauty looks round and thinks, there's a piano and a lot of books for me. How strange. Perhaps the beast doesn't want to eat me tonight. She takes a book and starts to read it. Suddenly she sees these words on the pages, Welcome, Beauty. You're the queen here. Tell me everything you want. I only want to see my poor father, says Beauty. Suddenly she sees her father in the mirror on the wall. He is very sad. She also sees her home and Hortensia and Rosalind. They are happy without Beauty. The beast is kind to me, she thinks. Why am I afraid of him? At twelve o'clock she has lunch. After lunch she goes to her room. What a beautiful piano! Thinks Beauty. I want to play it. 
she plays some wonderful music on the piano. Then she looks at all the books in her room. Some of them have got pictures and others have not. She takes a book about flowers and looks at the pictures of different flowers. Then she sees pictures of roses of all colors. Now I want to go to the garden and look at the lovely roses, she thinks. She goes to the garden and stays there all afternoon. She looks at the flowers and feels happy. At dinner time she sits down at the long table and then she hears the beast coming. She is terrified. Beauty, can I sit here with you? Asks the beast. You're the lord of the castle, says Beauty. And you're the queen, says the beast. Can I ask you a question? Yes, of course, says Beauty quietly. Am I very ugly? Asks the beast. Beauty does not know what to say. She looks at him and thinks for a moment. Well, yes you are says Beauty. But you're kind and polite. The Beast looks at Beauty and smiles. You're right, I'm terribly ugly but I'm kind. This is your home now, Beauty. Please don't be sad. Some men are handsome but they're not kind, says Beauty. I prefer you because you've got a good heart. Thank you, Beauty, says the Beast. Now Beauty is not afraid of the Beast and she eats a big dinner. The Beast looks at her and asks a question. Do you want to marry me, Beauty? What a question! Beauty is terrified. What can I say? Thinks Beauty. She is silent for a moment and then she says, No, I'm sorry, I don't want to marry you. The beast is angry and Beauty is afraid. Then he goes out of the room and says, Goodbye, Beauty. Chapter 5 The Magic Ring Beauty spends three months at the beautiful castle. Every day she reads books and plays the piano. She walks everywhere in the big garden. She likes the tall trees and the flowers of different colors. She puts beautiful flowers in the rooms of the castle. Sometimes she makes perfume from the flowers. But the days are long and she is often lonely. Beauty often thinks about her father, her sisters, and her brothers. I want to see my father again, she thinks sadly and I want to see my home again too. The beast goes to see her every evening at dinner time at nine o'clock. They talk about interesting things and are happy together. Beauty is not afraid of his ugly face now. Every evening the beast asks Beauty the same question, Beauty, do you want to marry me? And every evening Beauty answers, no. One day Beauty says, Why do you ask me the same question every evening? Because I hope to hear a different answer, says the Beast. I'm sorry, I don't want to marry you, says Beauty. The Beast is very sad. But I'm always going to be your friend, she says. You're a wonderful friend, says the Beast. And you are too, says Beauty smiling. I know I'm terribly ugly, says the Beast. But I love you a lot. I'm very happy with you. Please, don't leave me. Beauty's face becomes red and she is quiet for a moment. In the mirror of my room, says Beauty, I see my poor father. He's sad and lonely. He thinks I'm dead. My sisters are married and my brothers are away. 
I want to see my father for the last time. Can I go and see him, please? Yes, you can go and see your father, says the beast. But I'm going to be very sad without you. Oh, thank you, says Beauty happily. Please don't be sad, beast. I'm going to come back in a week. All right, says the beast. You can visit your father tomorrow morning. But remember, you must come back in a week. Before you come back, put this ring on a table near your bed. It's a magic ring. Goodbye, beauty. Chapter 6 The Plan of the Sisters Beauty awakens in her father's bedroom the following morning. She moves downstairs after getting up. Beauty, is that you? exclaims her father as soon as he spots her. How lovely! Here she is, and she is doing well. With great joy, Beauty gives her father a hug. Her father says, Get dressed quickly and then tell me about the beast. When she gets to her room, she discovers a chest filled with exquisite clothing. This is a gift from the beast, Beauty tells her dad. He's really kind and always brings me gifts. She selects some exquisite clothing. I want to give Rosalind and Hortensia these beautiful clothes, she declares. The chest vanishes as soon as she says this. Beauty's father says, the beast is watching you. These exquisite garments are intended for you, not for your sisters. Abruptly, the chest reappears. Rosalind and Hortensia visit their sister that morning. Both of them are really unhappy. Rosalind says, Oh, Beauty, I'm sad. Beauty asks, Why are you unhappy, Rosalind? Well, that's quite the tale, remarks Rosalind. Tell me, please, says Beauty. My attractive spouse spends the entire day staring at a mirror. He doesn't ever speak to me or look at me. Oh my goodness, that's a major issue, Beauty remarks. My husband is very clever, but he doesn't like anyone, and no one likes him, remarks Hortensia. He doesn't like my friends, so I can never invite them to lunch or dinner. They remark, we have a lot of issues with our husbands. My poor sisters, Beauty exclaims. I apologize profusely. Explain the beast to us, says Hortensia. Well, Beauty says, he's not a bad man at all. He is really considerate. I am the queen and I reside in his magnificent castle. I'm not employed. I stroll through the garden, read, and play the piano. The beast visits me for dinner every evening, and we have lengthy conversations. It's amazing. The two sisters head to the garden in a fit of rage. Rosalind says, Beauty wears lovely clothes and shoes. She resembles a queen. She's overjoyed. Why does she have luck? And why do we not have luck? Rosalind, you're right, Hortensia responds. Our luck isn't very good. However, we might get lucky. In one week, Beauty must return to the beast, or he will become enraged and devour her. Rosalind responds, then we have to keep her here. The beast will then become enraged. Beauty receives kindness from the two sisters during the week. They converse and have fun with her. In the country, they stroll side by side. 
Between her sisters, beauty is content. I feel loved by Rosalind and Hortensia, she muses. I love them so much and their good sisters. I must go back to the beast's castle, declares beauty at the end of the week. Her sisters, though, begin to cry. Oh, beauty, please stay with us for one more week, Rosalind responds. You are essential to us. Yes, beauty, please don't leave us, replies Hortensia. We love you and we have fun with you. Yes, Rosalind responds, stay with us. Together, we are capable of great things. Beauty is at a loss for what to do. She chooses to stay an additional week. Chapter 7 Vision Beauty ponders, the beast must be feeling desolate without me. But I crave a few more days with my family before returning to him. She gazes thoughtfully at the image of the beast in her mind, her yearning for him palpable. Ten days later, Beauty is visited by a dream of the beast lying lifeless on. The castle's garden lawn, uttering words of despair, it's the tenth day, Beauty, and you're not here. I cannot exist without you. As she awakens, a chilling realization grips her. The beast will perish without her presence. Determined, she resolves to return to him, placing her ring by her bedside as a silent promise. Reflecting on the beast's kindness despite his outward appearance, she ponders, why not wed him? He may be unconventional in appearance, but his heart is pure. Unlike her sisters, who are discontent despite having handsome suitors. With resolve, she sets off for the beast's castle the next morning, contemplating adorning herself in finery for the occasion. However, upon arriving at dinner time, the beast is conspicuously absent. Panic sets in as she searches every room, her mind racing with worry. Suddenly, her dream floods back to her, and she rushes to the garden, fearing the worst. To her relief, she finds the beast lying still, but alive. With tenderness, she revives him with cold water, his weak heartbeat signaling hope. As he stirs, she implores him to cling to life, declaring her love and refusing to let him slip away. Chapter 8 Revelation Suddenly, the garden and castle burst into radiant light, illuminating the night sky with dazzling fireworks. Amidst the spectacle, beauty turns to behold an unexpected sight, a handsome young man stands before her. Confusion gives way to realization as he addresses her by name, thanking her for breaking the enchantment. In disbelief, she questions his identity, to which he responds, I am the beast. Perplexed, beauty grapples with this revelation until the prince explains that he was cursed by a malevolent witch, his true form hidden until genuine love set him free. Overwhelmed with emotion, beauty accepts his proposal of marriage, her heart now certain of their love. As they explore the castle together, beauty is overjoyed to find her family awaiting her. Tears of happiness flow as they reunite, accompanied by the appearance of the benevolent fairy from her dreams. With a proclamation of beauty's forthcoming royalty, the fairy dispenses justice upon beauty's sisters, transforming them into statues until they learn the error of their ways. 
Amidst the celebrations, Beauty and the Prince exchange vows the following day, surrounded by love and laughter. As flowers rain down upon them, the Prince reassures Beauty, promising a future filled with happiness. Together, they embark on their new journey, leaving behind the shadows of the past and embracing the bright future ahead. The End Adventurer of Daily Reading 1. Set a goal. Determine what you want to achieve through your daily reading. Whether it's expanding your vocabulary, improving comprehension, or simply enjoying literature, having a clear goal will help you stay focused. 2. Enjoy the journey. Above all, Enjoy the process of reading and learning. Find joy in discovering new stories, ideas, and perspectives through the wonderful world of literature. Embrace the adventure of daily English reading as a lifelong journey of growth and exploration. Hi friend! Please unsubscribe!